An Ebola patient is only infectious once they show symptoms. The more the infection progresses, the greater the risk of transmitting the virus. Corpses of patients who died of Ebola are extremely dangerous, especially when family members touch the body during funeral rites. From the first sign of the disease, a diagnostic test must be carried out. A technique called PCR is used, a technique whereby the genetic material of a potential disease-causing agent is amplified. The virus can be detected two to ten days after symptoms appear. The Ebola virus cannot survive sunshine, or wind, or chlorine, or soap. Good hygiene practices, like not performing funeral rites, isolation of patients, and disinfection of their personal belongings, are usually enough to stop the epidemic. Healthcare staff are at direct risk. In addition to universal precautions, they have to protect themselves with a whole arsenal of measures. Protective overalls, aprons, masks, hoods, goggles, gloves. It's when removing this gear that the personnel is at the highest risk of infection. Neither treatment nor vaccine against Ebola exist yet. Doctors can only rehydrate their patients, sometimes give them a blood transfusion, and prescribe antibiotics and painkillers. I was very much afraid because my two sons had died already at center, and then, you know, I'd be carried over there. So I was very much afraid. I was teaching, but one of my fears to return to the classroom was coming from the ETU center. And people, the stigma. I'm afraid that parents will complain. Somebody from Ebola center is now teaching their children. Many people will not let to send their children. So, to avoid all of these things, I decided to be by myself. Faced with the virulence of the epidemic, the WHO authorized two emergency strategies in the field. A cocktail of medications that had previously been used for Westerners infected in West Africa, and the use of eight experimental treatments. <laughs> 